Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Ash Wednesday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boerter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin our Lenten season on this Ash Wednesday, we commend to the Lord all of our hopes, our desires, but also all of our sins, our wounds that need healing. May this Lenten season be for us a time of grace. Grant us, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and tear your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in mercy, and repents of evil. Who knows whether he will not turn and repent and leave a blessing behind him, a cereal offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room, and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. My transgressions, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
We are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him then, we entreat you not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At the acceptable time I have listened to you and helped you on the day of salvation. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Today, harden not your hearts, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel. According to Matthew, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before men in order to be seen by them, for then you'll have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give alms, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you fast, Do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are told in the book of Joel that God wants us to tear our hearts, not our clothes. What the prophet is getting at is that real sorrow for our sins results in a change of attitude and a change of behavior. We can cover ourselves in ashes. We can wear the colors of mourning. But unless we are prepared to take an honest look at ourselves, nothing will ever change. We're entering this period of Lent, a time of thinking about our lives, where we've been, and where we're going. And Jesus gives us some clues as to how we are to behave in this period. Most importantly, he tells us that our prayer, our fasting, and our almsgiving should not be a public spectacle. We do these things because they help us in our relationship with God, not to make ourselves look special or holy. Praying is good, but if we're doing it for the wrong reason, then it's not going to help us. The same is true of fasting. Fasting 
can be a valuable spiritual practice. But if we do it for the wrong reason, it's pretty useless. Almsgiving is a, a wonderful way to help those who are less fortunate than ourselves. But if we do it begrudgingly, what's the point? When we pray, we pray because we acknowledge that we cannot do everything by ourselves. It's saying to God that we need him, that we need his strength and his guidance. When we pray, we are telling God that we value our relationship with him and we want to build it. When we fast, we are using a very physical action to remind ourselves that we are utterly dependent on God for all things. We use it as a reminder to ourselves that maybe there are things in our lives that we should be fasting from, whether it's too much TV or junk food, or more serious things like our attitudes towards people and how we treat them. When we give alms, we are proclaiming that everything that we have is a gift to us from God, that we take our responsibility to share God's blessings with others seriously. During the sprinkling of ashes, the minister repeats two statements which sum up for us the purpose of this Lenten season. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We're reminded to put things in perspective. That when we return to God, the things that have been important to us during our earthly life, such as money, possessions, power, and prestige, well, they won't matter anymore. We will be naked in the eyes of God clothed only with our faith and the good deeds that have flowed from that faith. We're also told, repent and believe the good news. Lent is not a time of beating our chests and saying how sorry we are. It is a time to be actively turning towards the Lord and living a better life. May your Lent be time of grace, a time of encounter with the love and the mercy of the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, we humbly ask our Father to be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. I invite you at home to, to also take whatever ashes you have prepared. Be prepared to pray with us and blessing over them and then to sprinkle these ashes on one another. O oh God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers, and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the lengthened observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
repent, and believe the good news. Repent and believe the good news. With faith in our loving God, in his forgiveness and in his mercy, we bring to him our prayers. For the unity, peace, and welfare of the Church of God on its way to Holy Easter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the perseverance of those soon to receive the Easter sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elimination of slavery, exploitation, and conflict in human hearts and in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual gifts we need to fulfill our mission as ambassadors for Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to pray, fast, and serve the needy as the Lord wills, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis that parishes, Placing communion at the centre may increasingly become communities of faith, fraternity, and welcome towards those most in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear our prayers today, for we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, that become for us the bread of life. This is be God's prayer. Rather than we've got a short and wine, that we come to share in the divinity of Christ, humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands to become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we please with this gift we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride. Contribute to the feeding of the poor. And so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels. As with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 
holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created lightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never stop gathering a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, to be poured out for you, and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, our husband, with your apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, on his constant prayers we rely for help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Butit Lakhali our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. 
earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. So, my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray.
may the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace and give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.